Right, well this session is going to be looking at some of the most common trading mistakes that new investors make when they first start getting involved in the financial markets. Now I've taken some of my own experiences, plus some of the experiences of some of my colleagues here, to try and collate the most popular common mistakes out there. But hopefully you guys at home won't quite make those same mistakes. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is have a look at those main aspects and look at them in more detail. Well the first trade mistake that you want to be aware of is utilising insufficient risk management. When you first start getting involved in investing, it's very, very easy to just go ahead and buy and hold, but you have to be that little bit more sophisticated when it comes to that. Every single position that I enter when I get involved in trading, I always have a stop loss set at a specific point, and I've got my tape profit order set at a specific point. It's very, very important that you always have your exit strategy in your mind before you start to enter any position. What are you going to do if things don't go so well for you? And what are you going to do, obviously, if things go quite nicely? Risk management is the lifeblood of any trader because if you lose all your money, you've got no extra capital to take advantage of strong opportunities in the future. So bear that in mind. Insufficient risk management is one of the big common mistakes. Make sure you guys at home don't go ahead and do that. The second most common mistake out there is getting involved in investing without having a suitable strategy in place or a cohesive strategy in place. Many investors jump straight in, start trading stocks and indices and foreign exchange without a set strategy to follow. One of the things I want you guys to be uh, thinking about at home is what common themes are you going to have running with your investing? When are you going to go ahead and buy? So why are you buying this particular product and following that same set of rules throughout uh, buying those instruments? Where are you going to set your stop loss? Have some kind of commonality about where you uh, usually set your risk management. Is it near support and resistance levels? Is it based on fundamental factors, etc., etc.? Uh, I want, want, you, want you guys at home to think about uh, what normal amount are you going to go ahead and put on your trade? Um, are you going to consider buying more? More importantly, when are you going to decide to get out? Always have a think about your entry and your exit strategies as well. Once you've got this set strategy that you decide to follow for each particular product, you can then stamp it on every single trade that you go ahead and do. If you change your strategy left, right and centre at the very beginning, how will you know about when you're being a very good investor and when things are going in your favour just out of pure luck? So one of the common mistakes is not to have a cohesive strategy. One of the things that you guys at home are going to be doing now is having a good idea about what set of straight elements are you going to add to your trading. When are you going to buy? When are you going to set your stop loss? Are you, when are you going to exit your position? When might you consider buying more? And so on and so forth. So that's a good area to get yourself started. The third common mistake that investors make is in regards to not having a suitable methodology. One thing that you really want to think about when you're at home there is, do you have enough time to spend on the financial markets if you think you're going to be some kind of big fundamental trader, where you're kind of really looking at, you know, trawling through all the newspapers, going through all the websites and collating all the investment reports, then deciding what to go ahead and buy and sell. That all sounds very, very good. But if you've got a full-time job or you've got family commitments and you don't have that much time to spend for the financial markets, to me, that would seem like quite an unsuitable methodology. Similarly, if you want to get involved in trading, say, foreign exchange, which is very heavily involved in technical analysis and charting, if you're not quite so uh, educated in that kind of field, you know, trading for uh, foreign exchange, for example, might not be that good an idea for you. So do have a little think about how much time do you have to dedicate to the markets? What are your trading strategy going to be? And is it suitable for your lifestyle? Remember, investing in the financial markets can be quite an interesting hobby to have out there if you've got enough time to go ahead and dedicate to it. And if not, if you don't have that much time out there, then you looking involved in technical analysis and charting can be the way forward. But just make sure you've got a suitable methodology that fits your lifestyle. Well, the fourth common mistake is quite a big one to get to grips with, and it's a potential overuse of financing. You guys know with trackers you've got access to variable financing, which means you don't have to outlay the whole amount of your possession in one go. It's such a great benefit, but it's also one of the things that can really cause you to get into a lot of trouble further on down the line. The more financing that you utilize, obviously you only have to use a very small portion of your trading account. So it's fantastic. You guys can open up multiple positions going forward and have a lot of big exposures to the market. Just remember, for the more financing that you use on positions, the more expensive your borrowing costs are. Financing allows you to magnify your profits, but remember guys, it also magnifies your losses. So don't go too crazy on the financing front. Don't be afraid to you know, dial down that financing, outlay a little bit more of your own money if you want to do slightly longer term positions. If you guys want to trade shorter term, then utilizing financing can be very beneficial because it allows you to get that little bit more market exposure. But just remember, when you dial up the financing, it also causes your, your potential profits to go up, but also your potential losses. So don't go too far in regards to financing.
Well, here we are, finally we're at the final common mistake that investors sometimes make, and that is poor monitoring and record keeping. One thing to always be aware of when you first get involved in trading is not to go ahead and look too much for the next trade at the expense of not monitoring your previous one. Every single night, you should check your previous positions, check the price charts, and make sure that your support and resistance levels haven't been broken. Um, because one of the things when you first start to get involved in trading, you always look for the next trade. And it's very exciting to look for the next trades, but remember, not at the expense of your previous ones. You know, that kind of monitoring exercise is incredibly important. You want to be aware of where your support levels are, your resistance levels, check the fundamentals, see if there's been any big changes, because things can be positive, but remember, things can also be negative. So always get a chance to check that out. In regards to record, keeping, what you want to be able to do is keep track of all the trades that you do. The ones that you did well, you should mark down you know, what you did particularly well, what factors uh, contributed to it being successful. If you have uh, positions that work out not quite not so well, mark down, you know, did you make any mistakes? Was there something that you didn't consider? Was there another outside source that impacted your position? Was there any kind of negative correlations and so forth? So when you get to start to trade that product again in the future, you can go back to your notes and check your record and say, ah, I should have checked the price of copper when I was trading a mining stock, for example. So that is one of the other big common mistakes that come out, but I'm sure you guys at home won't make the same mistakes as others have.